Hello, today I'm here with a new video and if you don't know who I am, my name is Lisa. I'm a creative YouTuber that is trying to find my place here on YouTube. And if you haven't been here before, I did have a no buy last year, so 2022 I was on no buy and I have done updates about this. Um, every month I did do an update, I will leave my playlist here in the corner but I also wanted to do I've been working on a tag video for a couple of months now because I wanted to talk about my no buy and also come with some tips if you are thinking about a no buy or a low buy or if you maybe are in the middle of one now so these are six questions and I will leave them down in the description and I guess just getting started. So the first question is why did you go on a no buy? And I had two reasons why I did wanted to do a no buy. The first reason was because I felt overwhelmed with my makeup collection. It felt like I had too many new products in to be able to use all the things I already had and I just hated the feeling to have unused palettes just waiting for me to use them. It's okay with maybe one or two, but when it comes to like you having seven palettes that you haven't used or you do have palettes in your collection that you do love but you don't have the time to use them because it's always coming in new things. That did stress me out and I was like this isn't like... It's taking away the fun. It's taking away the love that I do have for makeup and I didn't want to have it like that. I want my makeup and my YouTube thing to be like fun and I want it to be something that I want to do and something that I feel good like when sitting down and like see all my makeup. I want to feel good about that. So that was the main reason and the other reason was also like I do want to save more money and makeup was a thing that I spent much money on and that I was like it doesn't make me happy anymore so that is like too much money and it's money if I'm going to invest money in something or if I'm going to buy something I want joy out of it but I, I didn't feel like that because I was too overwhelmed so that is why I did go on my no buy the main yeah the two reasons question number two what has been the hardest i think the hardest has been just to get some time behind me like if you invest like one say the first two weeks then you're like if i'm going to buy something now i just have to start over and do like i have just lost two weeks and that was like the hardest to just get some routine into it and just like forgetting you know the joy when you're clicking on buy or something that was the hardest and also like when my absolute favorite brands came out with something new that was so so hard um, it was like in the beginning of my no buy, I think it was in March, February, March, both Nabla and Kaleidos did release new things, that is two of my favorite brands. Luckily for me, it wasn't something that I really, 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 really wanted. And I was like, I can buy this later. I do have the opportunity to buy this later. And... Um, yeah, that was hard in the beginning. And also, just to stop thinking about buying new makeup. And just getting in another routine, like using old things and using palettes that you already have. I've, I, that was the hardest for me. Question number three. What, it, what was easier than you thought? And I, for me, it was like finding joy in my collection. I thought like I'm so tired of everything I have, I'm not going to 
I think it's fun to do my makeup. I am going to miss to having a new highlighter, to have a new blush, to not buy any new lipsticks. But that was actually easier, like to shop my stash more and be happy about the things that I do have. I didn't thought it was going to be like that. I haven't missed a blush. I do have kind of a lot of blushes. But I like haven't missed a blush this whole year. And it was never like, oh, I should have have gotten this before my no-buy. I should have got this highlighter before my no-buy. So that was actually so much easier to really appreciate my collection and I'm so happy for that because that was one of the main reasons why I did go on the no-buy as well to like find the joy in makeup and find the joy in my collection. So that was easier than I thought. I thought I was going to be so bored. Even though I have used the same highlighter for... I don't even want to talk about it. Question number four. Any product that you missed out on that makes you sad? And in the beginning, yes. Now, I I think the most things are doable. I think the thing... If you have like a bigger collection and you have a lot of different colors, I think you can do dupe out the most things. The thing I did be a little bit sad over was the Anjelka Nyqvist and Oda's Eye collab, the Gila palette. And that is because I have two Oda's Eye palettes. I have the collab with the Let's Makeup Corner and then I have the Urid, Urid palette. And the Urid palette is not that good. Like, I don't like it that much, but the palette with Annette, I love that palette. And what I have gotten, like, the... What I have gotten from others as well is that their collab palettes are better than... It's, it's different formulas in their collab palettes. Or it just feels like people love the collab palettes more than their normal palettes when it comes to Owen's Eye. So I was a little bit sad and bummed out about that because I do really want to try more from Owen's Eye. And I did like how the Gila palette looked and I think I would have liked the formula. So that I was a little bit sad about. But I actually think that I can do my own version of the Gila palette. So yeah. I think that has been the only thing this year. That has been like the only really limited palette that I have been wanting. Or the only super limited thing that I have wanted. Question number five. How long is or are your no buy slash no buy going to be? Mine was for a full year and I did plan it for a full year early on. Like from the beginning I planned to have a no buy from the 1st of January to the last of December. And the last question, question number six, and it tips. And here I have to check my notes because I, I do feel like it's hard to start. So, if you're thinking about a no-buy or a low-buy, I want to come with some tips. And I know that what works for me maybe doesn't work for everybody. And maybe you can follow some of these and maybe these tips can get you thinking of what you think can work for you. So the first thing that I feel like all people say when they're talking about going into a no buy or a low buy is to unfollow all new makeup Instagrams, YouTube channels, like Trend Mood and others like that, like new makeup and even like the own makeup brands on Instagram because it's going to be harder if you're going to see new things all the time. It's going to be that. And I think like in the beginning it is more important before you like get a routine on it. Now I, in the end I could look at trend mood and look at like Kaleidos, 
Instagram and LH Cosmetics without being sad about it and without like starting to feel FOMO. So I think that is like the first good thing to start with, like go through your Instagram feed and your YouTube feed and just unfollow everything that you know triggers you to buy something. And also start to follow people that are doing a no buy or a low buy or people that do maybe shop my stashes and try to not only follow people that review new makeup just because it's going to be easier to get inspiration with playing with the things that you have in your collection if you see somebody else do it and also if you are having maybe yeah what should we take like the <laughs> astro pink palette for example and you have this in your collection just search and watch old videos with an old palette and you are going to be inspired even though the palette has a couple of years on it just watch old videos you don't have to watch like only new videos and I think that that has helped me a lot to see people use what I already have. I think that is like a really good start. Another thing that I think is really important is to set a goal and an end to it. And I know that like going on a full year from the beginning might be a little bit... It maybe doesn't work with everybody. I think you have to find your own like um, um, your own limit can you say it like that maybe you can just start with two weeks and then when you have done two weeks take two more weeks and then maybe take three weeks at a time or a month at a time and just see like you don't have to start with full year nobody is like perfect and it doesn't what works for me maybe doesn't work for you so i think it is important to set like an end to it i think it's hard if you're going to start with a low buy or a no buy and just like i'm going to do this however long i feel like i think it's easier when you have done maybe half a year and then just go with the flow but i think in the beginning it's hard to go with the flow and also i feel like Maybe you will start with six months and after that you are going to allow yourself to buy something and still be in your no buy or low buy. I think that is important like to see something ahead of you that you are seeing the end of it. I think that is important because it's hard like when you don't see an end to it, it's harder to keep doing what you are doing and another thing that i also feel like don't be too hard on yourself if you buy something it's not the end of the world and i think that is something that you need to learn and i think that people need to be more nice to each other i was always so afraid when i was on my no buy and i bought things like I bought new mascaras and I bought new makeup sponges and I was so afraid that people were like you are cheating and I think that is important to remember that it's your no buy or your low buy and it is okay to buy something that you need uh, and it is okay if you shop one item it's not the end of the world <laughs> it's not and um, I think that you set your own rules to it and I think that is important to remember. And the last thing, I don't know if this is a tip, <laughs> but um, if you don't like a product that you have in your collection, okay, if you say it like that, you are like, I'm going to have a no buy for four months and uh, you have you open maybe new product that you have had in your collection you use it and it doesn't work for you it is okay to buy a replacement for that it is okay if you have an eyeshadow prime mess it was for me that you I, it didn't work for me i couldn't make it work it was getting me so frustrated and i just hated to do my eyeshadow because i know 
this eyeshadow primer is going to fuck it up. It's not going to be good. So then I bought a new one. Because it, it's not that important to really have a no buy if you're using a product that only makes you frustrated and angry and just make you hate everything. It's not going to make it easier for you. So if you have something in your collection that doesn't work for you, get rid of it and buy something that you will like instead that brings you joy <laughs> instead of like a bad mood. I think that is important like it is okay if you are on strict no buy to get rid of products that you doesn't like and buy a replacement for that. And you know what? I think that was all. I it feels like I should have more tips, <laughs> but I just don't I do have maybe the thing that really did work for me. This is not a tip. This is a super bad thing to do. But I think this is what made me actually do it. I did work a lot <laughs> in the beginning of last year. Like a lot. And I didn't have the time or the energy to buy new makeup. It's, it's not a good thing, but it got me started. And also I think, and yeah, that could be another tip to do something else. If you maybe want to, if you feel an urge to buy something, just put your phone away. Maybe listen to a podcast, maybe watch your favorite TV show, maybe clean your house, bake a cake, go for a walk, just put your phone down go step away from the computer and just do something else because the FOMO will die down it will trust me and that was maybe all the tips and like a little side note i i'm not an expert on this i'm not but I am happy that I did do my no buy. I'm happy that I did succeed with my no buy. The only thing is now, like, I don't know what to do. I still have bought, I've bought two makeup products since my no buy ended. I have bought a new face primer and a new concealer. I don't know how it's going to feel to buy a new eyeshadow palette. I thought that I was going to wait with it. I think I maybe are going to buy it for my birthday in March. And after that we will see. I have no idea how I'm going to continue this. Maybe I am on a low by now. I have no idea. But yeah, I do really hope that you liked this video. And I hope that I could give you maybe some tips if you are thinking about the no buy. Thinking about the low buy. And... Yeah, just keep like following people that are doing the same thing as you do. That helps a lot. So yeah, I hope that you liked this video. And if you're not subscribing to my channel, please do. So you don't miss any of my videos. And I hope that I will see you in the next one. Bye!